Today on Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. And I just needed to prove it, that it could work. So I sort of had this idea of creative capitalism at the time, and it proved to be a wildly successful program. Now I'm getting really excited. Okay, this is the part where I'm going to get loud. Holy crap, here we go. I like telling stories. I learn best through experiences. Everything I do is because of everything I did. Talk about having maximum impact while having a ton of fun. When you can net through that, what you do leave behind for your listener will have more impact. Wow, bring it on. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond, and today on Thrive Loud, we have the founder of a company with a lot of issues. A 25-year vet of the fashion industry, her company, Prink Shop, creates advocacy campaigns for social issues and aims to provide their community with something to wear that they care about, create a dialogue, spread the word in a positive, affirmative tone. She's an entrepreneur, self-starter through and through, and has always been her own boss and is the epitome of what this program, Thrive Lab, is all about. Thrive Loud listeners, Pamela Bell. Pamela, how are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. She's for... smiling, everyone. She yeah. like hears it and is blushing a little bit. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing about the word vet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a it's a good experience it's thing. It's fine. Yes, yeah. thank you. New 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 label. <laughs> so well, well, I think in this industry, you have anyone that works in the same industry for maybe yeah, five years true, are already true, a, a seasoned true. No, pro. Thank you. We are coming here from New York City, and you have a very interesting company story, history, that a lot of things that we could all piece together. What I wanted to do for our Thrive Loud listeners is kind of bring people up to speed, but not the full from the womb version. I want to go basically from a certain part of your career where you sold a business, which we will talk about in this, in this interview, and talk about how this whole idea came to light, because it is a pretty unique concept that I think our community will love to hear about. Sure. Thanks. Um, well, I had I had sold a company um, with my partners, and I had a um, negotiated a, a pretty long non compete the the last week of the of my work there. Um, sort of like debated whether I should do the non compete or not, and then I just did it. It was sort of a, a gift that I gave to my kids. So um, I started. After a few months of being with my kids, I decided I needed to do something, so I started working with not-for-profits. Okay. And taking my product background into not-for-profits, I thought, instead of asking all of the time for money, for fundraising, why don't we create products and sell them, and then the not-for-profits can actually earn money on the sales of their um you know, something that I would create for them. Has, gi- has giving back been something that's always been in you? Yeah, it's always been in me. Okay. I think since, you know, I mean, I, I was a Girl Scout. I <laughs> sold a lot of Girl Scout cookies. I can, and, I, I can imagine and that. And <laughs> really liked that. I, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I've always been, my, my parents and I have sort of fought a lot since I was like a young kid. They're very conservative, and um, I was always, you know, happy and willing to you know, share half my sandwich <laughs> with anyone <laughs> that needed it. So, um, not that they wouldn't, but you know, it was just, it's a different, I, I just always have felt like it's important to take care of those around you. Okay. Very important. Cool. Um, anyway, I started with the not for profits and they, most of the organizations that I would meet with didn't really have the sense of, of entrepreneurship in their, um, you know, in their wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. So we tried. I designed some products for a few companies, and then they couldn't get their heads wrapped around um, inventory management or actually selling, or it was against their principles. So they really were fundraisers. They weren't able to take on the idea of products. So I decided that and a combination of my daughter coming home wearing a graphic T-shirt one day that said Saint Tropez on it, mm-hmm. and I just looked at her. And I was like, "We we're we're not going to Saint Tropez, and, like, <laughs> and you haven't been to Saint Tropez. Like, do you even know where it is?" 
And she just said, oh, I like the graphics. So I thought, oh, maybe graphics on shirts where kids want to wear things that they feel proud of or that they, you know, they want to speak about would be an interesting idea. So that was really how, you know, all things kind of merged together. I was like, wear something that you care about. So, and these were... The idea was not only just things you care about, but expressions, messages that you can use the shirt as right. a communicative device. Well, I decided <laughs> that that would be something that's very powerful because advertising is traditionally pointed towards the consumers. And if as a consumer, you could walk down the street and project your value out, um, that I thought that would be a very powerful thing for good, not necessarily Saint-Tropez or... Um, you know, Yale, something like right. that, you know, and that it was really something that you valued. So that's how I started coming up with the first designs. So here you were, you, you paired, obviously, trying to come up with a charitable idea and cause, something that you wanted to do, and recognize that there was maybe a missing need in how people were thinking about fundraising. You get an idea spawned from your daughter coming home wearing a T-shirt that you'd wish that there was a better message, for lack of a better communication, and now you've paired that together. Okay, so was that the birth of Prink Shop? And then what did you do to make this whole thing kick yeah, off? Yeah, that was the birth of Prink Shop. Um, you know, I started designing. I, had, um, I designed something for a group called Donors Choose. Mm-hmm. And I went to them and I asked them if I could uh, start selling the shirts. And then I would donate money back to them. And we, we didn't really market it exactly correctly the first time. And, and also with not-for-profits, sometimes they can't really join in a commercial venture. Mm-hmm. So that one was, was, to be honest, it was a great design, but it didn't really take off. Um, and it wasn't until we really found a partner that was willing to join in with us to promote the product. Okay, and which partner was that? That was the UN Girl Up Foundation. Okay, great. Um, and what do they do? And they do, they take care of girls all over the world. They okay. feel like girls are educated and safe. There's nothing that can stop them. Mm-hmm. So they have programs literally all over the globe. And we designed something with the support of Cara Delevingne, who's, a, you know, a celebrity in her own right. And she wanted to support also. So we sent designs back and forth. We came up with the line, you see a girl, I see the future. Mm-hmm. And we reimagined it in a pretty powerful, bold graphic, put it on the shirt, uh, Kara wore it, we launched, we, we posted it on our Facebook, our Instagram, they did it on theirs, and there was a swirl, and we sold a lot of shirts. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here at a table, by the way, we're, we're here in New York City at uh, Prink Shop's headquarters, and I'm looking at all the different types of messages Who's coming up with the messages? Let's um, talk about well, that. Well, we collaborate on them a lot. I okay. mean, I would say that the beginning, I did most of the work, and now I have um, Karen, who's here also, uh, helping. We riff a lot. We talk about, we go deep into the issues. We say, okay, what is the issue? Um, you know, uh, women's right to choose. Right, and so, it's 1973. And it's 1973, and that was one of my, that, I think that was really, I, I had that design before, for you see a girl I see the future but we hadn't had the partner mm-hmm. at the time and now we do we work with the NIRH mm-hmm. and that's been wildly successful I think that 1973 commemorates um, the decision the Supreme Court decision of Roe versus Wade mm-hmm. which allows a woman to choose right. and 1973 just graphically is very appealing so we try you know we don't make graphics that say save the whales although you know i do believe in saving the whales we just try to make it more of a conversation piece i'm I'm looking at some of the titles here uh human first i love i am not perfect uh where perfect is basically inverted like you would see it in a mirror backwards yeah when you when you look in the mirror the word perfect comes out that one was for the crisis text line okay and we also collaborated collaborated with them now we have not-for-profits contacting us all the time to come up with a campaign for them. I'm just laughing because I just realized one of them was you are not the, bo- the boss of V, and the V <laughs> is positioned, it's shaped through a woman's body, and you can only imagine where the V was. We will provide the artwork here so people can yeah, see it. Yeah, so. that's good. Yeah, that one was, um, I, I was with a friend who has younger children than mine, and one of them just stomped his foot and said, you're not the boss of me. And there's a group called Lady Parts Justice. Mm-hmm. And they're very forward and provocative and 
very liberal and they wanted me to design something for them so I was walking up the steps after he had said you're not the boss of me I was like oh you're not the boss of V <laughs> and that was just it just came out so let's do a little rewind here because we will come back to this very this point right here about the business and we're going to talk about all the places people can find and, and learn more about it but we're going to rewind and talk a little bit more about you um, obviously for those that are not familiar with Pamela Bell and they'll see this from the links on the show um, you're one of the co-founders of Kate Spade. Talk about from way back when, I, and I know a lot of these stories, you guys started in, in the trunks of cars, and and, yeah. and and how did that all come to be, like in those very, very early days and coming out with a product? Yeah, it was, um, well, I had met Katie in a summer share in Amagansett with her then-boyfriend, who became her husband, um, and our other partner, Elise Ahrens, and we all shared a summer share um we each had a room we each paid for it we met a couple of days before through another mutual friend of ours and she had some samples which i thought were amazing um she had a sample sale and literally like a real sample sale like they were actually samples which now (laughs) sample sales people make for their samples right that's true back then it was like you know I don't know, she must have had 10 bags or something, and she invited some friends over, and they were having wine and drinking, and I spent $600, and I just, I loved them. I was completely drawn to them and to her, and um, I came home, I called her the next day, and I said, how much did you do? And she said, I did about seven, and I was like, 7,000? That's amazing. And she's like, no, 700. Wow. And I said, I bought 600. Like, what did you, you didn't sell. <laughs> you gave them too much wine. Like, what are you thinking? So I was like, next time, don't have wine. And then over the course of the summer, we became friends, and they asked if I would join them in partnership and trade equity for um, working for free. Wow. And uh, I said, oh, I can start in about a month. And Katie called me. She's like, oh, no, the deal is for starting tomorrow or not at all. And I was like, what time? Like, <laughs> oh, that's you know, great. I'll be there. So it was a, a lot of hustling. We never borrowed money. Mm. We, we just, you know, very bootstrappy, scrappy hard work. The fast forward version for those that are not as familiar with the Kate Spade brand, um, you guys within how many years were eventually acquired by, you were global. We sold, we we had, yeah, we had two, um, two rounds. We sold 56% of the company about five years in, Mm -hmm. and then eight years later, we sold the rest. Right, and that was to Neiman Marcus. It was to, yeah, we we had a, um, we sold 56% to Neiman Marcus, and then we had negotiated for a seven year later, I guess it was seven years later, um, a, a put and a call, and we put our stock. Okay, got it. Um, so they were forced to buy us out, gotcha. basically. So um, looking back, I guess it was it was a good thing that they only sold $700 that first time that you were out, and it turned out to be not such a bad uh, play. Yeah, it was a good play. I mean, it was a lot of hard work, <laughs> I have to say. But I saw something in the line that a lot of other people weren't seeing. It took mm-hmm. about three years for us to really get people to buy into it they were nylon bags um we had a lot of a lot of no's yeah a lot of no's but we we stuck with it as as we we talk with many of the most successful entrepreneurs who've been on the on this program it you always hear about the big wins and the yeses and you're right everyone remembers though there were many many no's before the big wins we had so many no's i mean it was really we we drive the the car to a factory who was supposed to be taking us and we had all of our materials in the back of the car and I said to Katie I was like let's just go up first without carrying the boxes in and just talk to him for a minute and when we got up there people were walking out of the office with boxes we're like what and he's like oh no I'm leaving I'm moving I'm going to (laughs) Dominican Republic to work for coach and you know that was like a crying fit sort of like we're done we're done and then we drove around and found another factory so Pamela, what was the the moment that you said, oh, my God, we've kind of made it, when you recognize that this is a real home run? Um, I think we had a sample sale once, and there were people around the entire block, like an entire city block. And there were some celebrities that were waiting in line on the, you know, somebody came up and said, Harry Connick Jr. is waiting in line around the corner. And we were like, whoa, are you kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) It was just a, you know... And we, got, we did get an order. We had a fax machine that was one of those rolly fax machines that, um, that came in, and we got a very large order from Neiman Marcus, and I think that that was, like, cred. You know, <laughs> right. It was like, wow. It was something like a $40,000 order. 
Hey there. If you're enjoying how Lou is connecting with this guest in this interview, then just imagine how impactful he can be in person. As an international speaker and consultant, Lou Diamond is all about getting organizations to thrive through the power of connecting. To learn more about how you can hire Lou to speak at your company, your conference, or your next event, head on over to loudiamond.net and click the book Lou button to learn more. He'll truly get everyone to thrive loud. All right, let's get back to the show. The business is sold. Years have gone by. And, 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 I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't address this issue because, obviously, for those that are listeners and those are familiar with Kate Spade, obviously, um, a terrible tragedy happened earlier this year. And she's obviously very close to you. Um, I, I, I just wanted to address it, I guess, from the sense of um, we know it's hard. The, I, what's the, the ongoing message in the way from someone that has a company that's all about giving the right messages going forward? What's your thoughts on all of this? Because, you know, mental illness and mental health is so fragile. Right. And, right. and I know it meant a lot to you, but if you could share a little bit, just your thoughts on Yeah, I on think that, that the, the, the lesson is really um, not to be too proud. We were all from the, the Midwest and had a very, very um, strict upbringing, and we were, um, you know, just get it done, power through it. It'll be okay sort of stiff upper lip and I think that being vulnerable is one of the things that I've learned and I think that it's really important that you know all you know men women children can accept vulnerability into their lives and it's not perfect and you're not perfect and uh and ask for help when you need it I think that there's a whole culture um in Europe and it's getting less in America I think people are talking about it a little bit more but you know, if you're not feeling good, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. And okay. I think that that's probably the thing that I've, um, you know, maybe wish she knew more. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, condolences to you and obviously to everyone. I know how much she meant to you and everything like that. And thank you for taking the time and sharing yeah, this sure, with us. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, moving forward over to here. So you had a successful business in one end, which, is, which most people don't ever see in their entire lives to have such a run like that. And now you say, I'm going to put out this effort. I want to talk about the causes that you're helping to sure. support with this. So explain kind of the, the business model of Prink Shop, because sure. I think that will help our listeners really understand yeah, what this is. So one of the things that I did, just even to go back, is one of the things that um, Kate Spade that I had started was uh, there's a, a group called Women for Women. And we decided to um, work with them and make a set of hats, knitwear hats. So we designed within their capability. And they were in um, Bosnia, war-torn Bosnia, Herzegovina. And we took graphic images and we wove them into the hats. And we were very patient. And I realized that big business wasn't that interested in it. Mm -hmm. We were partners. We were owned by Neiman Marcus. Um, We had a president of the time. Uh, at the time that no one really was supporting this effort. I think I even paid for the production samples with my own money and I just needed to prove it that it could work. So I sort of had this idea of creative capitalism at the time and it proved to be a wildly successful program. Um, I think we, you know, we created factories and villages that would not have had work otherwise and then sold the products and no one even knew that they were made with this social mission, but we just made great products. Gotcha. So um, that was full circle. So I was very interested in manufacturing in a way that would also create jobs. So part of the prink shop, our, our tenant is that we produce in not-for-profit factories also. So our largest supplier is a factory in Port Washington, New York, that was created to employ adults with autism. Oh, wow. Okay, great. And 73% of their workforce are adults with autism who would otherwise be underemployed or unemployed. It's a very high rate of under unemployment for adults with autism. Wow. So silk screening, that was one of the things I wanted to do. It's like silk screening is repetitive. Mm-hmm. It's fast. Sure. Um, it's not stressful because the, the markers are there. There's, there's boundaries within the, the machinery that you use to silk screen. And... Um, that's that's part of our production also. So I think that it's, you know, we donate money back to causes and we produce with a social purpose in mind. That's great. And, that, and by the way, that's a full circle, but it's not only about the causes of a contribution of the revenues you're taking, but you're even doing it from the creation of the items as well. That That's a unique spin, and I think that's pretty cool. That's an awesome yeah, thing you got thanks. doing. Thanks. Pamela, I love asking all the guests on the program this question. Um, look, you're, you've ran one business. You've got another one coming in. 
you know, the speed of entrepreneurship can be at a rapid pace. And sometimes we have off days. Right. So when you have trouble thriving, what do you turn to or who do you turn to, a practice, a person, to get yourself back on the thriving trap? Um, yeah, okay. So I, I try to exercise. Okay. I think that that's like... <laughs> what about people say, I try to exercise. I go to the yes. gym yep. and, and ride the bike pretty hard. Uh, I spend time with my kids if I can, mm-hmm. my children. Um, and I usually just go into a creative mode. I think that that's like creating is something for me that's I've always loved to make products. So I think that if you're feeling, you know, off, just finding something new, seeing something new and something maybe that was looking old. Oh, I like that. Well, that's a, kind of a neat thing. So you, you know, have a different yeah. perspective, almost like an different, artist side. Right. To it. Exactly. That's exactly. very, very cool. Um, what would you like Prink Shop to become? I like to be the, the go-to resource for advocacy campaigns. Okay, great. Um, we've been doing a lot of collaborations, mm-hmm. so a lot of companies have been coming to us to create campaigns for them. We did something with Theory, West Elm. We have an ongoing partnership with J. Crew, and we love that because they have a different audience than we have. Got it. And um, we're hoping to do more collaborations. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we want our listeners who, um, obviously, um, you have a specific... A target though that I, I think you hit your audience too, right? Obviously, I know you'd mentioned there's lots of young women that are wearing the clothing. That's is that specifically who it's geared to? Most of the product we have women, but we we want to engage men in the conversation. Also, we did a project. Um, we created a shirt that says "I'm a feminist too." Yeah, <laughs> and that one was very successful. I I actually made it for my my 18 year old son. He was, you know, the, he wants to be part of the conversation I think with the time's up and the me too and all of this men are sort of lost in the conversation and I think that we we would like to bring them into it Uh, a little bit more I think it's great and I think it's really funny I'm looking at one of the ones here that says human first and uh, you know like it's putting all the different people together that we're yeah, all people and we're all that's a really process. cute story can I tell you that story yeah, so I, we the Special Olympics called us they had their 50 year anniversary okay. and I went down to DC as part of our research we don't you know we don't usually randomly just come up with them we do a lot of research on the issue mm-hmm. um, on the organization and what they're trying to say so yeah there's, oh, there's like, the we, we were joking that we would have at least one garbage beeping. truck garbage yeah. truck in the background the there it is truck. So um, I went to D.C. and I met with a few of the athletes mm-hmm. of the Special Olympics, which also, who also work at the corporate headquarters. And I asked them all, you know, what message would you like to tell? Like, what's your story that you want to tell? Ben, this, he was the tour guide. He, um, he's blind and he has some cognitive, um, we call them abilities, but, you know, probably everyone else would say disability but we we think they're intellectual abilities and he said oh I just want to be known as as Ben first I don't want to be known as the blind man you know that's the special olympics athlete I want to be Ben so we I said oh like human first and that's how we came up with it I like it yeah that's good And, and and do um so let's give let's do that right now we're going to provide all the show note links sure it always comes better when it comes from the guests. So share with the Thrive Loud fans all the places where people can learn about Prink Shop, um, websites, social media, everything. Sure. We'll okay. That. So we're we're at Prink Shop on Instagram. We're at Prink Shop on Twitter. I guess Facebook, Prink Shop. Um, PrinkShop.com is where you can buy and see some of the shirts. We're um, we're going live soon on the J Crew Marketplace. Okay. Uh, and we also have ongoing collaborations with J. Crew. So any given month, you can go on to jcrew.com and look at Prink Shop also and see some of the, the products that we do there. But okay. most everything is on prinkshop.com. Gotcha. And we're, we're going to run a special promotion for Prink Shop via Thrive Loud. So there will be either a link directly you can find on the show notes, or if you use the promotion code, I think we're going to make it th- uh, Thrive Loud. Yes. And there'll be... Some kind of we're going to do um, free shipping. <laughs> there you go, you which we don't free. do ever, but we're going to do it. We're so, excited. So you yeah. get free shipping, and you could do this right in time for the holidays. So you want to get some great, meaningful, purposeful gifts. Uh, great messages for the kids too. By the way, I can imagine that's an extra great product to yeah, have. Yeah, that's for, the thing for kids. Yeah. Like I think that it's also a way of creating a dialogue. I mean, that's we didn't really touch on this, but the the shirts and the campaigns are meant 
to spark a dialogue right. and have somebody say, oh, what, is that? what does that mean? Or that's such a great message. Or, yeah, I believe in that. And you get a thumbs up, like when you're wearing it, a sort of nod. I think it's, it's important. Um, I have a colleague, uh, I'll give him a shout out here, Tony Chapman. Tony speaks about the unconscious bias. And the most important thing that, you know, we all have it somewhere about sure. all different, uh, whether it's race, religion, um, weight, whatever it might be. We have certain things in, in our background that we always have that. But the most important thing is to have the conversation. What's great about all of the issues that you put together is that that's starting the conversation. And that's actually a great idea. Let's have the T-shirt so people can ask what it was. And very coincidentally, um, former Thrive Loud guest, uh, Natalie Molina Nino, she and I hosted a show, and she was wearing your 1973 shirt. Oh, really? So it was oh, a really great. cool thing. Yeah. We have it on clips and everything. Yeah, so. she's great. We're, yeah. we're going to do something with her. Well, I think. it was very, very cool stuff. Um, so we've done all the plugs. We've done all the fun things. And now you get to have the fun signature question for Thrive Loud, which I didn't, I didn't even give you the prep for beforehand. Yeah, I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> What's your all-time favorite movie? What's my all-time favorite movie? Um, the Royal Tannenbaums. Really? Yeah. Okay, so let's hear why. By the way, I like this movie, and I happen to like Wes Anderson, and I love his films. He makes all these crazy ones. But what films. specifically connected with you on that movie? I think that it's the, the beautiful dysfunction of a family. Wow. Was that, is that something that you came from? <laughs> or, or why would you Pretty just... much I'm living, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's it. Uh, it, it it's an unbelievable cast uh, from Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson. Oh, yeah. uh, the but... Halloween costumes in my house are like repeats of, you know, we've got the Adidas tennis outfit, you know, we've got the Margot fur coat, like, yeah. It's... That's really cool. That's a, yeah. By the way, that's, so we've had over, I mean, I've interviewed over 300 some odd people, and that's the first time that movie's come out, and that is a really, really? good movie, so yeah. well Thanks. done, Pamela. Thank you. Very, very cool. Thanks. Um, continued success with this. Thank you for sharing everything today. It was so much fun having you on the program. Yeah, thank you. Of course. And to all our Thrive Loud fans out there, thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep thriving onward and upward, and remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.